Hey, welcome to our video on the heat of sublimation. I should really see the enthalpy change of sublimation, so delta H of sub. So sublimation, what are we on about here? We're on about solid going to gas. And we might imagine, right, this is going to be endothermic, right, because we are breaking into molecular forces, so that is exactly correct. And the question is, how do we find this? So how do we calculate this for, say, ice going to water vapor? And it turns out that we can't often do it directly, but we can make use of a thermodynamic trick. So we want to go from solid to gas, right? So we want delta H of sublimation. And it turns out that maybe we don't have this data. Uh, but one of the things in thermodynamics uh, that allows us to calculate this is the idea that enthalpy is a state function. So it turns out that as long as you start and end up in the same places, the change is the same whether you go one way or the other. So we can make use of this sneaky fact here. So if we have, say, delta H of fusion for ice and we have delta H of vaporization for liquid water, we can take that path there and we can say that would be exactly the same change as if we went directly. So we can go ahead and calculate that actually. So delta H of sublimation uh, is equal to delta H of fusion, which is actually 6.01 kilojoules per mole. I got my more precise numbers out for this calculation. And heat of vaporization or the enthalpy of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. And I can add all these together, I guess to one decimal place maybe, and it was a positive 46.7 kilojoule per mole and so it's really pretty darn big right we said before that the vaporization is so large because you're breaking you know all remaining into molecular forces well sublimation is massive because essentially you're breaking every single intermolecular force right the vapor is so far apart it doesn't have any intermolecular attractions at all we can say so uh, the heat of sublimation is normally massive well done